Hi, this is Brian Forster of Hidden Inca Tours, and today we are at the Aswan Quarry in the very southern part of Egypt, right next to the Nile River. And what you're looking at here is called a test pit. This is where the ancient Egyptians tested the quality of the stone, but the question is, how did they create this test pit in the first place? Because at the time that this work was supposedly being done, they basically only had bronze level of technology in terms of chisels, etc. And what we're going to be seeing, aside from test pits such as this, is we're going to be seeing two different levels of technology. The one is that used by the dynastic Egyptians in order to cut the stone, which is a, a series of slots cut into the granite and then wooden wedges put in but then a much more mysterious technology that was clearly responsible for such things as the test pits. Now this gives you a general view of the quarry, and in fact the entire city of Aswan is a giant granite outcrop. But look at the curious wall in the lower back part of the video clip here, a very straight vertical feature, which is quite curious. And then here we're looking at the top of the unfinished obelisk, which would have weighed 1,200 tons had it ever been completed, and it never was. Tradition says that it was being created during the time of Hatshepsut, but this is highly unlikely. Also look at the depths of the pits on the left and the right-hand side of the obelisk. Very deep, taller than a human being. Now here you get the general view of the obelisk from the base all the way up to the top. Again, if it had been completed, it would have weighed 1,200 tons. And another obvious question is, how would they ever have got it out of the pit? And you also see these shallow cut marks, which were later attempts to break the obelisk into smaller pieces. This would have been the largest obelisk ever created. There are other large ones too in Egypt that weigh around 400 tons, but this again would have weighed 1,200. Now you're starting to see these depressions in the ground, almost like scoop marks, and that is the curious technology that we're still trying to figure out. Here, Again, you're looking at scoop marks in the hard granite stone. And here again, you see these depressions, all somewhere between one foot and two feet um, in length. And here on the wall, above the unfinished obelisk, again, you see these intriguing scoop marks. Now the, uh, the quarry is very, very vast, as you can see. One more pass at the 1,200 ton obelisk. And here again, these curious scoop marks. This appears to be an attempt to release a major shape, maybe a statue in rough. And many believe that this actually is the technology responsible for doing all of the work on the obelisk, not only finishing, but also basically these stones supposedly were the tools used to cut the basalt, um, or sorry, the, um, the granite obelisk and other sculptures, etc., from the bedrock itself. As you can see from these examples and many of our group in April 2019, tried desperately to remove material. Not exactly an efficient way to go about trying to shape an obelisk or anything else. And again, other members of our April 2019 tour trying to shape the granite and not making too much progress. Okay, one last attempt with some force. Mm, not doing too well. 
Okay, one final example. So clearly this was not the technology utilized in order to cut the obelisks and remove them from the quarry. There once again, a little scan of the 1200 ton obelisk. And this shows you in close up. Notice the scoop marks on the top part of the obelisk. And this gives you a sense of the general size of it. Absolutely massive in scale. And once again, we're going to see this vertical surface in the background there, almost perfectly flat. What kind of technology was utilized in order to create that? Now, this is the technique used by the dynastic people and even into the Roman age of cutting granite. What they would do is they would have meteoric iron chisels in limited number and they would make these slots into which they would put wooden wedges and then hot water would be applied in order to make the wood expand. And here's an, an example where it actually worked. So this is the rough technique of the dynastic people of separating a chunk of granite from the bedrock. Here is a successful example of where that was actually achieved. You see remnants of the where the wedges would have been. And here again, you'll see some vertical ones in the quarry. And now we get to the really interesting part of the video, aside from the great obelisk. But look at these intriguing, I would call scoop marks. These are very regular and approximately two feet in width. And this is a small obelisk that was being worked on when, for some reason, work stopped at the quarry in Aswan. Again, you can see they're quite even. And here, you can also see that both the left hand and right hand sides were being worked, probably at the same time, in order to liberate <coughs> what would have become an obelisk from the bedrock. So what kind of technology would this have been in order to do this kind of work? I would say very advanced technology, and I would also say that that tells us that this was not done by the Romans, nor by the dynastic people, but is far, far older and was the work of the megalithic builders who were responsible for other things such as the boxes at the Serapium of Saqqara, and the Great Pyramids, and other megalithic mysteries located in Egypt. So here we have another sweep past. You can see where the wedges would have been put in to break large chunks of stone. And at the bottom of the screen, you see these scoop marks again, and they're on the back of that wall. And here is someone coming out of the trench that was made by this mysterious ancient technology. And finally, another view of Aswan itself and the quarry in particular. Notice in the background, it's all solid granite on which buildings have been erected. And finally, we're going to see once again, there you can see the slots where the wooden um, wedges would have been put in, and there at the bottom, the mysterious scooping. So if you'd like to learn more, this is my book at amazon.com. Meet me in person at Contact in the Desert in uh, California, May 31st to June 3rd at Indian Wells. That's the website of Contact in the Desert. And think about joining us in Turkey. We're going to be exploring in September, uh, including Gobekli Tepe and the underground cities. And in January, we're going to be doing a tour 
of Lost Ancient High Technology and Machining in India. If you're interested in either of those tours, please contact Patricia at www.horusrising.com and thank you for watching.